certainly over the first half of this year, uh, U.S. investment into China, both from funds as well as corporations, has increased 1.5 percent. Uh, a lot of that is being driven into greenfield development strategies that are creating jobs here in China, um, that are building factories, for instance, the, the large Tesla factory, which is in the news right now, Tesla avoiding uh, a 10 percent increased tariffs with a, a visit by Elon Musk here last week. Uh, and those, those factories are part of a strategy we see U.S. companies deploying, which we call in China for China. So essentially building uh, pr products locally to sell into this consumption story. Chinese growth uh, over the last uh, six months or, or so driven about 75 percent by domestic consumption. And so I think people really still believe in that both domestically and and certainly American companies as well. Do you think that can continue, Ben, or you, you view it more of as a sh sort of a short term phenomenon? I think it's long term. I mean, we obviously are very long the China consumption story. Uh, we believe that consumers here are continually upgrading their tastes. Uh, and a lot of that consumption upgrade involves foreign brands. Uh, consumers want to buy Tesla cars. They want to use Dyson hair blowers. They want to uh, use French uh, f facial care products. And so I think that will drive increased uh, amounts of investment within China as foreign brands try to tap into those consumers who are increasingly wealthy and increasingly aware of a global array of products available to them. You know, when I was in Hong Kong a couple of weeks ago, Ben, I'd met a gentleman at the airport. He's an American entrepreneur. He started a bunch of companies. He's launching a new business. I won't say what they do. It's not public yet, but he's talking about it's in basically to have steel and aluminum, things that are hit by tariffs. And I said to him, why, why don't you, you know, start your company in America or in some other country besides China, given all that's going on? He said, listen, despite everything else that's going on, China still has the best supply chain capability. They know how to get things done, sort of, you know, idea to market faster than anybody. And even with the tariffs, he still views it as a good place to begin his organization. Is that a fair summation that China's just got such a lead that even the tariffs aren't going to move everything to Cambodia or Vietnam, Bangladesh or the United States? It's going to be very diffi difficult to decouple those supply chains and find alternative sources of manufacturing for these very high-tech uh, products. M maybe some of the lower-tech things can be moved out, uh, but certainly I think experiments to move some of that high-tech manufacturing and assembly out of China back to the United States or to other Southeast Asian markets ha have struggled. And um, in, in the long term, I think that to rebuild those supply chains from you know the microscopic pieces that re are required to the training of the individual uh, technical workers, uh, it's just not something that can be done overnight. And so if, if it is done, it's going to be a, at a massive cost, both to consumers uh, as well as the businesses themselves. And we're in an environment right now which is, is, has a high degree of uncertainty. It's not clear whether this will be a sustained process, whether the U.S. government will ultimately reverse course after, after a deal is reached and ultimately make way for uh, a more comfortable setting for U.S. businesses to do work here and encourage them to come back to the market. Uh, what's clear to me though, is that Western businesses acknowledge that this is a massive, massive opportunity, and none of them are going to sacrifice that opportunity at the behest of someone who seems to be looking more short-term.